Welcome to another episode of Success Through Failure. This is your host, Jim Harshaw Jr. I am coming to you from my sister's basement. No, I didn't get kicked out of my house, and no, I don't live here, but my sister lives in Pittsburgh. Both of my sisters do, as do my mom and dad. And we, my family and I, have driven to Pittsburgh, and we are pointing our 2017 Toyota Sienna with a Thule roof rack on top and a bike rack on the back. We're pointing it west here in a couple of days and we're headed to Montana. So by the time you listen to this, I will be in Montana, or at least by the time this publishes, because you might be listening to this far off in the future sometime when there's space cars and flying cars and everything else. But I'm going to be in Montana by the time this thing publishes. So this is a dream come true for me something I've hoped to do for a long time. About 12 years ago, I remember Allie, my wife, gave me a gift for my birthday that said, your office. And there were a bunch of, it was a frame with a bunch of pictures in it and had all these outdoor places. And one of them was Montana, where, you know, this would just be my office, like you know, being able to work from anywhere. And this has come to fruition. I visualized this. It didn't happen overnight like most uh, amazing dreams and goals. It took effort and courage and failure along the way. But I will be in Montana for about a month working from out there, but taking a couple of days off, well, actually uh, at least one day off every week, as well as the weekends to go on some great adventures and whatnot, taking a week off to travel out there and a week off to travel back. We're driving and going to hit some awesome national parks and all that good stuff. So With all that said, we are going to dive into an episode that I've been waiting to publish for a long time. This has been on my list. I keep this list of these episodes that I want to publish. And I wanted to, I've always wanted to crystallize the lessons that I've learned from all these amazing Navy SEALs and special forces folk guys who I've interviewed over the over the years of the podcast. So way starting way back in episode 45 was the first time I interviewed a Navy SEAL. That was Mark Devine. And I've interviewed interviewed a bunch more since then. And there's just so many great takeaways. So I wanted to condense them all and put them into one power-packed episode for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go one by one through each of these episodes and pull out the one, at least one, sometimes two, of the biggest lessons from each episode. And now what I also want to let you know is you can get the action plan, not from just from each individual episode, but from all of these episodes combined into one PDF. We're putting all these in one PDF into an action plan for you for this episode. So keep an eye out for this. You can just go ahead and download it right now. You can go to jimharshawjr.com slash action, and you can download the full PDF to all of the action plans from every episode that I'm about to crystallize for you right now. So you get all the action plans, all the action items, all the recommendations, uh, all the links to these guys social media and websites and all that good stuff all in one place. Just go to jimharshawjr.com slash action. So let's dive in right now. So starting with episode 45, Mark Devine. Mark Devine is a highly sought after speaker and coach and author. He makes a lot of media appearances to discuss the Navy SEAL way of life. He was the man of honor or they call him the honor man, sorry, the honor man in his SEAL Buds class, meaning he finished number one in his class. So kind of a badass. And there's a quote that he shared that is so powerful. And I don't want you to take this lightly because this may may be the very most important thing I say this entire episode, but it's going to be easy to glaze over, easy to go, oh, okay, that sounds great, Jim. What's, What's next? Give me the next shiny object, right? But I want you to listen to this. This is a quote directly from Mark Devine, Navy SEAL. He said, quote, I believe that we all have a unique and discernible purpose. We are here to serve in some powerful way. And I also believe that most people don't figure this out. And I hope that's not you. I hope you invest the time and energy and sometimes money to figure this out. Out. I've done that. I've invested thousands of dollars with my coach to go through a framework to help me discover my own purpose. And this is actually one of the things that I do with my clients in an intensive session. So if, if that's something you are interested in, just, just you can 
find time on my schedule, you can go to jimharshawjr.com slash apply if you want to schedule a free clarity call. But this is really, really important work. And this is coming from a Navy SEAL. And I also want to share this second piece from Mark Devine. He talked about the inner game. Okay, he talked, This is another quote directly from Mark. He said, we have to cultivate a practice that I call, quote, sacred silence. Sometime every day sitting in silence. In the process, I teach, we start with breathing. So he starts with, he calls it box breathing. And I go more in depth into that episode. You can go way back to episode number 45, jimharshawjr.com slash 45, or just whatever podcast player you're listening to right now. You can go back to that episode around the nine minute, 45 second mark is when he starts to talk about the, the breathing process. But this cultivating this sacred silence, Mark Devine does a lot of meditation and working on the inner game. So this isn't just for yogis and meditation gurus. This is for some of the highest performing people in the world. Okay, so that's episode 45, Mark Devine. Let's move on to the next episode with Tom Shea. By the way, there are seven episodes, a total of six guys, but seven episodes that we're going to be covering here. So Tom Shea is a retired Navy SEAL, and he's the founder of Adam and Teen Alliance, which is a leadership, team building, and training organization dedicated to rapid, sustainable growth for his clients. And this is a quote about failure. This is what, what Tom said. He said, in the SEAL community, they decided a long time ago that the only way to be successful in combat is to constantly, in training, embrace failure because during failure, you get to see what the real problems are. In, you get it. They, they internalize this. They internalize that failure is a necessary step in order to be successful. Like going back to my interviews with Tim Ferriss, it's like doing you know, short-term, low-cost experiments. Like you're going to fail, but you're going to learn from those failures. Like, are you truly willing to fail at something? Are you truly willing to, to try something and fail? Listen, you don't have to go all in right away. You can test. You can iterate. You can improve. You can start with a minimum viable product or minimum effective dose. If you're familiar with you know, lean manufacturing or agile software development, it's all about starting with the basics and then expanding and improving and iterating and constant improvement. And it's the same with you, right? Maybe it's a diet. Maybe it's something with your relationship that you want to fix or, or some side hustle that you want to start, but you can't just seem to quite kickstart yourself in gear. Have you internalized the concept that failure is progress? Failure is learning. Or do you just feel like failure, ah, that's okay for other people. I like this idea of success through failure, Jim. It sounds like a great podcast idea, but logically you're thinking that makes sense. But emotionally, internally, you're saying, ah, that sounds good for other people. Maybe not so much me. And when I fail, that just means I'm not good enough or not smart enough or capable enough. All right, so that was the first takeaway from Tom Shea. And here's another one I want to give you from that episode. And this is episode 132, 132 with Tom Shea. In the SEAL community, he says, this is a quote, you commit to a mission without knowing how you're going to accomplish it. I'm going to read that again. In the SEAL community, you commit to a mission without knowing how you're going to accomplish it. And because you're committed, there will be about a billion how-to solutions that are readily available because you are committed. In the business community, it seems that they wait to be committed until they have a solution, end quote. Are you willing to commit to your mission without knowing how you're going to accomplish it? You don't have to know how to drive from, from New York City to Los Angeles before as you pull out of your driveway. You, you know that you, know, you can get there. There's a lot of different ways to get there. We Googled our, our trip, our, you know, Google Maps, our trip from Charlottesville, Virginia to, to Pittsburgh and then out to Montana. There's different routes. We don't have to choose our route. As a matter of fact, we haven't. We're gonna, we're gonna figure it out as we go. We're gonna build our path as we go based on you know what things are open because of the whole virus stuff and you know what weather the weather looks like and just other things. You know, Reed Hoffman, the founder of LinkedIn, he said, if you're not embarrassed by your first iteration, you've launched too late. You don't have to be ready to start. 
And you're saying, well, Jim, well, well what do I do first? Pick the first thing. It, it almost doesn't matter. You can you uh, put it this way. It usually starts with connecting with a person, making a phone call, reaching out, taking that first step. When you take that first step, you'll see the next one. And then the next one. You can't see the second step and the third step and the fourth step because you haven't even taken the first step. So are you willing to make that commitment? I didn't know that I was going to end up, that I didn't know my path. I knew my path would get me to here. I knew what the mission was to get to this business and this life that I now have. I knew that was the mission, but I didn't know how I was going to get there. I tried a lot of different ways. I failed. I messed up. I made mistakes. I cost myself a lot of money but I'm here. I encourage you to take that next step too. All right. Next episode 154, 154, Eric Kapitulik. So Eric attended the U S Naval Academy. He was a four year letter varsity winner in the, on the division one lacrosse team there graduated in 1995. He went on to serve in the Marine Corps as both an infantry officer and special operations officer. Incredible story. He has a, a devastating story of tragedy that really is pretty moving whenever you hear about it. He was in a helicopter that crashed and he lost quite a few men as it, uh, there's actually a YouTube video in the action plan for this, but uh, they lost a lot of men. And Eric talks about the resilience of having to, to deal with rebuilding his team after lo- losing so many in this uh, tragic helicopter accident. But Eric talked about this. Here's a quote from Eric. He said, you can stay inside your comfort zone as long as you have enough talent and you win games. But to compete for championships on whatever chosen battlefield that may be, we've got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. We've got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Like I woke up at 425 this morning so that I could go work out with a group of guys and do something really hard. But I knew that that would level up my game. I'm competing for championships. I'm not just satisfied winning games. I'm competing for championships in my life. And so I'm comfortable being uncomfortable. Like, Are there other ways you can find to make yourself uncomfortable? I've committed to the uh, Dr. Gilbert, the success hotline. I've committed to the 7C challenge, which is no cake, cookies, candy, chocolate, cola, chips, or the seventh C is complaining for the entire summer, 105 days from Memorial Day to Labor Day. And I made that commitment. Is it uncomfortable? Well, I've got a sweet tooth. And I'll be honest, once I made the commitment, it's not really uncomfortable because I'm willing to make that commitment. I'm willing to compete for championships. Are you? Are you willing to find ways to get uncomfortable for things you're passionate about, things you care about? I was uncomfortable when I was waking up early in the morning, working on my business, then going to my full-time job and finding ways to make it work, committing to that mission. It was uncomfortable, but it was worth it. Here's another one from Eric. He said, you'll never hear me talking about the kids these days. He says, just saying that phrase, people are just expecting some negative connotation after it. It's our belief that kids these days are no different than they were 20 years ago or 40 years ago or 400 years ago. What's different is us. Parents are different. Coaches are different. Teachers are different. Business leaders are different. It's not kids these days. And I just point out this mindset, okay? He's not blaming the kids these days. He's saying it's kind of on us. And he says it. Who's different is us. So that's an ownership mentality, Right? There's, that's a great quote, but more than anything, I just want you to think about embracing that mentality of not blaming. All right, the next one, again, I actually interviewed Eric twice, episode 154 and now episode 199. So just one thing out of this episode 199 from Eric Kapitulik. He said, for some reason, the freshman's job, and this is, he's talking about sports teams, the freshman's job is to pick up the balls at the end of practice. It's the new guy's job to clean the bus when everybody else gets off the bus. And he says, that makes no sense to me or any of us at the program. The program is his business. He says, that's the leader's job to do that. So think about that. As a leader, are you willing to do the dirty work? Are you willing to show up early and to stay late and to help with things that 
that you might feel like are below your pay grade? Are you willing to demonstrate that level of dedication? Is that not below you? Or are those things just eh, below me? I'm not going to do that. Sure, you might have other people who are going to, I'm not saying you have to take out the trash, right? But maybe you do. Maybe you do. Maybe there are times when, when that is the right thing to do. Think about that. Think about the message that that sends to your people as a leader. All right, next episode, 163, Rourke, Denver. Commander Rourke Denver has run every phase of training for the U.S. Navy SEALs, and he led special forces missions in the Middle East, Africa, Latin America, and other international hotspots. He starred in the film Act of Valor, which is based on true Navy SEAL adventures. His New York Times bestseller titled Damn Few, Making the Modern SEAL Warrior. It takes you inside his personal story in the fascinating, demanding SEAL training program. He was also an All-American lacrosse player at Syracuse, but I don't hold that against him. I'm a UVA grad, and uh, UVA and Syracuse lacrosse have a a good, long-standing, healthy rivalry. But UVA is the reigning NCAA champions right now. He said this, suffering serves as inoculation against the hard times that you didn't plan for. Suffering serves as an inoculation against the hard times you didn't plan for. This is voluntary suffering. This is chosen suffering. This is hardening yourself. This is creating a resilience and a strength within you. This reminds me of Joe DeSena, the Spartan race president, founder, who said that if we architect a little suffering into our lives, we can be happy just eating a cracker in the rain. And by the way, if you want to listen to my episode interview with uh, Joe DeSena, that's episode 27. So that one goes way back. But he said that about, you know, we can be happy just eating a cracker in the rain. I love that, that mindset. Like, are you finding suffering, finding a way to build some discomfort into your day? Because if you don't, you're just trying to find the, the newer house, the newer car, the, the easier way to go about life, and you're never going to be satisfied. I'm, I willingly got up at 4.30, 4.25 in the morning and went through some pain and suffering. And I can't say I'm really happy right now about that. I'm kind of tired. Actually, I'm just kidding. I'm pretty stoked that I did it. All right, next episode, 166, Eric Davis. He's a former U.S. Navy SEAL, decorated veteran of the War on Terror. He's been recognized as one of the premier sniper instructors in the entire United States military. And he says this, he said, you can Google the skill sets of a sniper, just like you can Google the skill sets of an author or an entrepreneur or a football player. The what is very simple. As a matter of fact, it's so simple and ubiquitous that it's what most people get stuck in. They get stuck in the what. He says, it's the how that really gets it, that really makes it work. Like, all the information is out there. All the information is out there. You want to be elite at whatever it is, all the information is there. YouTube, books, the internet, I mean, all the information is there. But are you willing to apply it? And better yet, I'm not saying this because I'm a coach, but this is, this is why I pay a coach. I know all the business information is out there. All the life skills information is out there, but I hire and pay money to coaches to help me apply it. If knowledge was all you needed, then we would have everything we wanted, right? We'd all be billionaires living in mansions on the beach with a Ferrari and whatever, right? Whatever it is that 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 dream is that you want, right? But are you willing to apply it? Are you willing to Get others to help you apply it in your life. Are you willing to have the discipline to apply it? Okay, that was episode 166, Eric Davis. Next one. This is the last one. Jeff Eggers, 174. Jeff Eggers, he's the executive director of the McChrystal Group. I'm sorry, it's the McChrystal Group Leadership Institute. And he focuses on organizational performance and leadership. He retired from the Navy in 2013 after serving 20 years as a combat veteran Navy SEAL. This dude's legit. I actually become friends with him a little bit. I've gotten to visit with him up in the McChrystal Institute just outside of DC and got a tour of the facility. Incredible, incredible guy, incredible human being. But I want to summarize the book concept that he wrote with with, uh, former retired uh, General Stanley McChrystal. They studied effective leaders. Good guys, bad guys, doesn't matter. Like 
Abu Musab Al Zarqawi, who was the leader of Al Qaeda in Iraq, uh, Abbas Tweed, corrupt New York political leader. Why are they effective? Right, good leaders, bad leaders. They studied them, and they identified three myths of leadership. And these are really interesting. And I think you're going to catch yourself probably going, wait, yeah, you know, I guess I kind of bought into this myth a little bit. And so there's three of them. Number one, the formulaic myth of leadership. This idea that there's a formula for leadership. Well, there's not. There are different styles of leadership, different people with different personalities. Some are outgoing, some are extroverts, some are introverts. So there's no one formula. There's not a single formula that's one size fits all. Do these things and you're a great leader. Number two, attribution myth. We attribute outcomes to a leader when maybe it's more than that, right? It could be circumstances or like in, I'm reading the book, uh, The Captain's Class, or like like it could be a team captain. So we, we attribute outcomes to a leader when it's not necessarily just the leader, right? There are different things that are at play here. A lot of other variables. So there's this myth that all success should be attributed to just the leader. And then number three is the results myth. And this is the idea that you should look at results. And the truth is that good leaders sometimes don't get good results. And bad leaders sometimes get good results. or they win battles because of some other circumstances. So these are the three myths of leadership. And, and uh, in that episode, 174, Jeff Eggers goes more in depth into those three myths. And so as we wrap up, I, I want to remind you, like some of this sounds familiar, right? These are basics. Are you willing to fall in, fall in love with the fundamentals? Are you willing to apply this stuff to your life? Is it hard for you to get excited about the fundamentals? If that's the case, then maybe you need to do a deeper level of work on yourself and figure out why is it that I have to apply these fundamentals? Like, what am I actually working toward? If you don't know what that is, if you don't have that clarity, that's where you start by doing the work. And again, you know, you can, you can grab time on my calendar. We can have that conversation, jimharshawjr.com slash apply. Or there's a great book I would recommend called Designing Your Life. And that was with, um, I actually interviewed one of the co-authors back in episode 124, Bill Burnett. And just a great book. It's really designed for younger folks coming right out of college, but it's very applicable to others as well. So anybody listening to this podcast. uh, So I recommend that as a beginning point for you as well. Again, if you like this episode, you can grab all of the action plans from all seven of these episodes that I just covered. Just go to jimharshowjr.com slash action, and you can get the PDF. If you valued this episode, could you please give the podcast a rating and review on iTunes, share this episode with a friend or somebody in your family who you know could really benefit from listening to this or, or somebody who you know that loves learning about Navy SEALs and special forces, et cetera. Give this a share. Just tell them to go to jimharshajr.com slash 253, or you can find this on any podcast player, Spotify, Google Podcast, iTunes, etc. Just go to episode 253. And with that, I'll wrap it up. As always, take the time to get clear on your goals and embrace failure as a stepping stone on your path to success. Mm-hmm.